Dr. Coley is back this morning to touch on something we don't often think about too much, ear health. Dr. Coley, how are you? I'm great, Claudia, how are you? I'm good. Well, I know all about ear health because I always have to go get my ears clean and oh. I like to do it like by a doctor. Yeah, professionally, that's yes. great, I love that. Why is ear health though important? You think about our ears, we take them for granted, right? Mm -hmm. They are the way that we communicate with the world. They're important for our safety. So if you're yep. driving and you hear somebody honk, that's really important. They're important right. for our communication, how we socialize with each other, how we connect with other people. And believe it or not, they're also important for our cognitive health. So people who don't have normal hearing can actually have a faster decay in their cognitive health, can have more depressive symptoms and such. So the ears do so many things for us, we have to keep them healthy. They really do. We just don't think about it as exactly. much as we should okay i want to ask you this because as a mother of two girls uh they're always on their headphones <laughs> the older one loves going to concerts oh. and it's to the point where i could see her phone saying it's too loud turn it down and she won't right does that do damage what kind of damage could that do? Yes, in fact, it can do permanent irreversible damage. Oh so when goodness. we're exposed to loud noises, like at concerts, it really can overstimulate the ears. And there's these tiny little hair cells in our ears that can actually get damaged. So what a lot of doctors recommend, which sounds counterintuitive, is that when you go to a concert, you're gonna be exposed to loud noises for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You actually wanna think about putting in earplugs so that you still can enjoy the music, but do it okay. in a way that's sort of safe for your ears. And I know I'm, you know, I don't do this myself, but when I travel, I have my headphones in for hours. Yeah. And really what they say for optimal listening, you should be at the 60-60 rule. So you should be 60% of the maximum volume on your headphones okay. for only 60 minutes at a time. And then you actually take a break. So what we see on the planes where everyone's got their headphones on Everyone. for hours and hours, that is not yeah. a healthy way to listen. Well, now with the kids, the AirPods are right. in 24-7. Exactly. Should we say take a break? You have to tell them to take a break. Okay. Because you're, again, you're over stimulating those cells and those are cells that are very delicate and they not only oh help God. with our hearing they actually help with our balance so if we yeah. have ear problems we can start to have issues with our balance and such too so you want to make sure that your kids aren't abusing their ears and what we're seeing in fact is that there is a higher incidence of hearing loss premature hearing loss in the modern era than there ever mm. used to be before because we are listening to a lot of concerts we're listening to yeah. loud music we're stimulated by technology we've got our headphones in all the time it's definitely a problem with the teenager in my case and the AirPods. Now, how should we clean our ears? This is a, an interesting one because some people say, I use Q-tips, I cannot not use Q-tips, I do not use Q-tips. But what's your take on that? So medically, you should not use Q-tips. Okay. Because what do Q-tips do? They actually push the earwax further into the ear canal. So you're causing it to be impacted or you're just smearing it around. You're not necessarily removing it or taking it out of your ears. So the way to clean your ears, and you should clean your ears every day, is the external part of your ear, this cartilaginous okay. part, you clean in the shower or you clean right after the shower using a well wet cloth or using a little bit of soapy water as soon as you get out of the shower you want to dry that part off right away a lot of times if we go swimming or we're in a bath or shower mm -hmm. we don't think about drying our ears right but that can actually help reduce the risk of infection and then okay. to clear the insides of your ears you either get it professionally done as you do right yeah, yeah. or you think about talking to your doctor about whether eardrops might make sense because these eardrops kind of soften or melt the earwax kind of make it a little liquidy so that okay. it starts to dissolve and kind of come out on its own. On its own. And you're not actually advancing anything like a cotton swab towards the eardrum, which can cause trauma, or of course, like I said before, it can cause impaction of that earwax. No, definitely. Now, what are some signs of ear problems to watch for? So this is important, because a lot okay. of my patients sometimes have something in their ears and they sort of blow it off. So if you have hearing loss, whether it's complete hearing loss or partial, you're just not hearing very well, something is muffled, something is soft, that's something that needs to be addressed right away because okay. the sooner you get treated could actually impact how you resolve it if it's yeah. inflammation or something in the ear if you have any ringing in your ears if you have mm. any kind of ringing whether a lot of times people tell me they feel their heartbeat in their ears they can kind of hear their heartbeat or they just hear a ringing sound or buzzing yeah. sound those are abnormal signs as well that you should get something checked out right away and okay. then if you have any ear pain whether it's in the ear canal itself or behind the ear or any problems with balance these could be signs of an infection those 
also need to be examined. Need to be checked right away. And real quick, how often should we get our hearing checked? Yeah, so this is something I didn't know until I actually looked at the guidelines, but starting at the age of 50, we should have a hearing exam. And you know, when we're kids, and obviously we get a hearing checked much more often, my niece and nephew go right. all the time to the yeah. doctor to get their hearing checked because it's part of their language development mm -hmm. and it's important. But as adults, it's important for us to do it regularly too. So at least at 50, earlier if you're at risk for ear problems or you've had ear infections or anything like that before, and then okay. regularly thereafter to make sure that we're not actually losing our hearing and not realizing it. That's right. You hear that, Dad? I, he cannot hear me and he needs to go get his ears oh, checked really? for sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Coley, for being with us this morning. Okay, make sure to email us your questions for Dr. Coley. Just send your message to mycoco at 9news.com and put Coley in the subject line.